Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I have found somebody that I don't think you've probably even met somebody like this before, and she's somebody that can heal our pets through energy healing, specifically Reiki. It's pretty amazing. And I've seen it work before. Tatiana Maldonado is with us from HowlingOm.com. Welcome. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Good to have you back on here. And yeah, it makes such a... I, I know the benefits of Reiki as a human, but to put that onto an animal, what a difference that makes. And just before we get on here, we were talking about how you also work with uh, animals from shelters. Now, if they're in a shelter, a lot of times they've gone through a lot of trauma, as we have as adults when we were younger, uh, and need to heal from it. And you work with with shelter animals, you work with foster animals, I'm sure, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so the Reiki works really well for shelter animals, for any rescue organizations, sanctuaries. Um, and I'd like to do volunteer hours actually uh, once a week to try and do for a rescue or a shelter. Um, you can just go into any shelter and um, I kind of just go to whatever dog I feel called to. And I can sit down there and send them Reiki and kind of just let them know it's going to be okay. It might be loud in here. There's a lot of barking or they might feel anxious. They don't know what's going on, why they're there um, and all of these things. And so the Reiki will allow them to kind of settle, to feel a little bit at ease, to kind of block out the noise and to let them know that it's going to be okay. Um, that I understand where they're at and kind of just show that empathy and compassion to them. Um, you can also use the Reiki for the veterinarians at the shelters when they're doing any type of surgeries. Um, same thing with the rescue dogs for any rescue organization. Sometimes we get cases where these dogs have been rescued from dog fighting rings and their faces are mold or they have puncture wounds um, and they're, they're rushed to the vet um on an emergency case and the reiki works well there as well while they're doing the surgery pre-surgery after surgery um and just any rescue animal that might have uh, anxiousness a behavioral condition um because a lot of them come from really severe cases um even if they've just been found on the street we don't know how long they've been running the streets if they've been attacked they're on survival mode and so the Reiki really does just kind of help them balance out that energy again, bring them down to a stable energy state, a calm state. Um, and it kind of just brings them, I guess you can say to a, a down to earth kind of level where they feel like, okay, um, I don't need to be on survival mode. I'm going to be okay. Um, and fostering as well. I foster many animals and that's the first thing I do when I bring them in is I do Reiki on them. Um, and it really does calm them down because you're connecting, you're communicating on an energy level and it really allows them to just feel like they can trust it bonds them and they're, they feel just safe. I wish I knew all about this years ago because I had a cat named Casey who came from a shelter and then I introduced another cat. Casey was always very skitterish anyway. So then now you bring another one in, then you bring a dog. And then you didn't even see Casey uh, ever. Uh, Casey is now with my ex and uh, and all good. But I'm uh, going to make that suggestion because I feel that she may have, there may have been some abuse from a male um, in a family. Because okay. when I would speak, she would get even more skitterish. And... Um then you add all the other ones in, you know, the other animals and honestly didn't even see her during the day. Like she would even hardly ever come out, you know, but sometimes she go on the couch away from everybody's like, and she's watching always on guard. And I I'm convinced that Reiki would have made such a difference. And, and that's just an example of you know other animals, what they they've gone through and they need to heal from. Absolutely. The Reiki could have definitely helped your cat understand that although She's had traumatic issues with male um, genders that you are not that male gender and that she can accept and be open to accepting new male genders, um, knowing that they will be nice and kind, loving and caring to her. So the Reiki would have definitely 
opened up that energy channel for her to understand um, you're different and, and you do have love for her and you're trying to help her and save her and change her life. What about when you're adopting? So I adopted a kitten like four months ago and I'm, uh, I'm going to get another one literally in a couple of weeks. I'm not, I'm not like the cat lady. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, my cat now, he's awesome. He's like a dog. Um, and I, I'm, I'm hoping, and I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty convinced this, this one will be, but is that a good idea to do Reiki on a new pet that you bring into your house? Absolutely. And I know you've been mentioning it. Um, and in our last session I meant to offer, and I'm going to offer it now. Definitely. I'm going to want to offer a Reiki session for you and the new cat that's coming in. Um, so that you can see the effects of the Reiki, um, and how it'll change the meeting and the transition of bringing in a new cat into your current cat's environment. Um, and you can be a testament to that because yeah, the Reiki oh, yeah. will definitely, um, will definitely stabilize the energy. It'll be a peaceful energy, a nice transition where neither cat feels threatened, uh, or jealousy or territorial, um, as it's, it's natural for them to feel all of those things. Um, and so the Reiki will help balance out that energy and let each one of them know there's no threat here. We can live lovingly together with the same owner and nothing will change. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for and call it fearful. I don't know if you could see this, but this is yesterday morning. What I woke up to, <laughs> he comes right up. He's like a dog. He's like, he get, you, know, you say, can I have a kiss? He right away, he'll run up and give you a kiss. Um, so Aww. I want them all to like, you know, mesh together. And I have a yes. dog, a dog too. So of uh, course. yeah, it's all good. Um, tell me about the other modalities that you work with. So Reiki is definitely number one, but also you do sound therapy with animals. Yes, you do sound healing. So um, I can use Tibetan bowls. I can use singing bowls. Um, and each singing bowl has a different frequency for each chakra. Mm -hmm. um, and so depending on what chakra you want to work on, or if you want to work on all seven, um, you can use those singing bowls um, to clear out any stagnant energy and balance out each energy and have all the chakras working together. Um, and I, I'm not sure if a lot of people know, but sound is a very huge healing modality. Um, it's frequencies, um, are extremely sensitive to every species, including ourselves. Um, and it's one of the best ways to integrate into the Reiki because it really magnifies the energy, the vibration of the person. I've had dogs come in that are super depressed or very timid, very shy. And with the sound healing, um, they finish the session happy, um, mouth open, um, very connected in the sense that they'll actually come up to you and greet you um, because that sound energy, it, it really does unclog all that stagnant energy that they hold in their body. And it kind of just frees it up for them. So the sound healing is amazing, whether it's Tibetan bowls, whether it's the singing bowls. The point is that the frequencies that any sound has and, and, and you can relate it to listening to music. If you, start, if you listen to melancholic music, you'll tend to be a little sadder. You start having memories and mm -hmm. thinking some people might tear up and cry. If you have music that reminds you of a great time or just happy music and you put it on in the morning while you're getting ready, your mood changes like that. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for the day. It's going to be a good day. This is awesome. Some people are driving to work. They're singing. They're happy. Um, they're dancing. So vibrations of any of any type of sound really does elevate or de-escalate your mood and it's the same with the animals it's it's why we use it for meditations as well i think as humans we we take it for granted the whole sound situation because we grew up listening to music so it, it, it's all about the music the vibration like you say it's a trigger memories come back in um yes but then you think of an animal they're all sound driven i mean you know <laughs> look at a dog you know, they're so sound sensitive. So when you hit, you know, uh, a bowl with a certain sound, it's got to resonate. And I will say this, I've, 
I didn't realize the power of this until I went to a, it was called a cacao ceremony. I don't know if I mentioned this to you. Um, this is back like almost a year ago. And it's using chocolate from the tropical rainforest, has euphoric properties. F put that to the side for the moment. I knew about the bowls. And as soon as we sit down, we're going to do a meditation. And somebody just goes, boom. And it was like a bullet going through you. Like you feel like, oh, that's what that does. And that was just one. I can't imagine when you hit other ones with different frequencies, what a difference that's going to make. So when you do sound healing, it's in conjunction in conjunction with with Reiki. You do them both. Yes, it's always in conjunction. I always start the Reiki first, um, and even now for the New Year's, uh, what I did at my uh, I have a business called Your Pause or My Pause Pet Sitting Retreat, and what I did for the New Year's because there's a lot of fireworks going on, and a lot of dogs get anxious, they uh, get really nervous, they're scared, they're freaking out is that I will run Reiki through the rooms um, on every corner of the room. I'll run Reiki. And then what I had was meditation music with certain vibrations, like you said, that will resonate through their body to keep them at a calm state for let, let them know that even though they're hearing a lot of loud noises, because really what, what scares the dogs, it's not so much the noise it's the actual vibration of the firework, of the bomb, of 100%. the gunshot, of, of the missile, whatever they're hearing, whether they're in Ukraine and they're hearing all of these bombs going off. You can yes. be a deaf dog and still feel that vibration through the entire body. And that vibration is what scares the animal. On top of that, their sonar is so much higher than ours that when we raise our volume for whatever music or when we're yelling or when we're speaking, it's so much higher for them. So if you think it's loud, it's so magnified for them that it really does bother not just their ears, but their entire body. So we have to be sensitive to those things. So yes, the Reiki is always, I always infuse Reiki in everything. Um, and like you said, you know, if you go to an elephant sanctuary and you hit that gong, that gong that just gives that sound, you will see all of the elephants or all of the horses coming straight to you because that, wow. that frequency of that gong that you're hitting, or even a singing bowl, a Tibetan bowl, along with the Reiki naturally brings them towards you and you will see all of the animals just come towards you i'm not sure if you've ever seen um it's i think it's in new zealand i know ireland does it as well i forget the name of it but it's a lady who sings to the high it's in, it's in scotland i'm sorry she sings to the highland cows and that's how she brings them in she has a certain lullaby that she sings it's absolutely beautiful and really what it is, it's the frequency of her sound, of her voice wow. that you will see the cows literally turn around from the top of the mountain and just come to her. So again, Reiki, the sound, it's really the energy, the vibration and all of those uh, modalities combined that can bring, it's, it's like a force that can bring any animal to, to you or any human being, really, you can wake somebody out of a sleep from that. You can put somebody into a sleep with, with music or frequency or Reiki because it really just brings it to a relaxed state. I totally see it and agree. And, and my wake up call here was just uh, two weeks ago. I brought my dog to my office, my studio. I never do. I just never, you know, he stays at home. I go, I, I, I see him. He's sitting right here. And as soon as the air conditioning came on and it just goes and it's like, boom, and then it's a low rumble. He started shaking. He says like freaking out. And I had to comfort yeah. him while I'm doing this as a dog, you know, not today, but right. you know, I'm petting him because <laughs> I felt so bad, but it wasn't even a loud noise. And exactly Tatiana, to your point, it was the vibration convinced of it yes. because he was probably feeling that rumble. Yeah, you could barely even hear it as a human. Yeah, barely even hear as it as a human. Yeah, but for the animals, it's so magnified for them. Yeah. It's exponential. I mean, it's so much so that animals, um, 
animals know when you're coming home and they know if it's you putting the key in the door or turning the knob or if it's somebody else other than you. That's how sensitive they are to it. So why not have Reiki and heal them and exactly. make them feel better? I mean, they're, it's all exactly. right there. Absolutely. How about animals that have injuries? Tell me about that, how you work with them and how that makes such a difference. Yeah, so animals with injuries, um, the Reiki works, Reiki works really on every level. So it can be on the skeletal level, muscular level, cellular level, um, emotional level, mental level. So any dogs with injuries, obviously it's injury on all of those levels. It's not even just the physical. If you have a dog coming in with a puncture wound, a dog that's been hit by a car, a dog that fell on his head, um, has had a concussion, uh, brain surgery, cancer, removing tumors, um, even going into the stomach, uh, organ type of surgeries, any type of injury, um, the Reiki can penetrate straight through where it needs to be to heal. And usually when it's an injury, it'll be on all of those levels, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, cellularly, skeletal, muscle, the ligaments. And you always just want to envision with the Reiki the body healing cohesively together on every one of those levels. Um, I don't know if you know of uh, Joe, uh, his name is Joe Dis Dispazia, and he was a paraplegic from a really bad car accident. And um, they told him he would never walk again. He was going to be in a wheelchair forever. And he ended up visualizing his spine fusing and healing and he did that for the six months that he was in the hospital and that man came out walking. Really what he was doing is Reiki, visualizing, having the intent um, and visualizing his spine healing on every single level from the inner to the outer to the skin to being able to walk outside to doing things. And that's exactly how you work the Reiki when you have a, any animal with an injury or, or yourself with an injury. Um, you know, even if you see a bird come, uh, hit the window and they fall and you're like, Oh my God, did they die? Or did they injure a wing, their leg, something you can send the Reiki right away healing and you'll see, they'll get right back up and just go. They're fine. They'll I be totally fine. believe it. Yeah. And you just brought back a, a memory that I long story short, I fell out of the ceiling in my garage. It was coming down the steps on uh, July 4th okay. with, with boogie boards. And I just like, whoa. And I rode the steps down and basically got road rash all over just from riding the, the steps down. So, oh. yeah. It, it, but but the problem was I I hit the I hit the, the concrete floor coming down, imp impacted on my my foot. Wasn't that bad. I didn't, you know, didn't get hurt really bad, but. Because of it, I had a planter's wart. Never had this wart, like big wart, just from the the, the impact. Apparently, impact. that that happens. Go to the podiatrist. God, I got like three different appointments. You know, it's just not going away. It's just like, what are we gonna do? He's trying all different things. Needle, blah blah. He's like, you need to will it to go away. You know, like Reiki. And this is ten yeah. years ago. Ten years ago, and I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, just will it to go away. Think about it. Focus on it. I'm like, all right. What kind of doctor did I find here? So I left and I started doing that <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. He couldn't heal it. Traditionally, three days later, it went away. And I was thinking it, I was you thinking see? it. You see, I know and it always amazes me, but yeah, absolutely. And you made me think about some animals that we do get that are burned victims that, you know, unfortunately have been set on fire or whatnot. Um, and if you do Reiki every day on their skin, because you said road rash and that's what triggered it on their skin that is burned, you can do Reiki and it will heal the skin differently if you compare it to another animal that's been burned as well. It'll heal, but they'll have that scar. The skin looks and feels different. The hair might not grow back. But in comparison, then when you do Reiki, you will see that the skin comes back as if it's normal. The hair will grow back. Um, it's just a, comp a complete different fusion of healing than when you don't do the Reiki. 
Well, you just triggered me in that, in what you said about the gentleman with the spine, because I didn't even think that I was doing Reiki when I was willing it. And I, and anybody can do Reiki. Yeah. Anybody can do anybody. Reiki. However, somebody like you that has trained and got certifications, you, this is just my view. So tell me I'm right or wrong that yeah. you can focus the energy certain ways where, you know, it's, it's like, yes. like the average person does Reiki. It's like a bazooka, you know, I hope I hit the target. I don't know. <laughs> but somebody like you, it's like laser focused. It's done exactly the way it should be done. And, and it yes. works every time where the rest of us, yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the difference, yeah. The difference between the Reiki masters is that we do have certain symbols that uh, we work with. So when we, when you're going through the certification, we get attuned to these levels and we're given uh, symbols that were given to these, uh, this tradition, Japanese tradition, decades and millennials ago, like thousands of years ago. Um, so they're sacred symbols that we use and those symbols magnify whatever the intent is of what you're trying to do. So the healing, um, you know, the behavior, whatever it is, each symbol is assigned to each level. So it'll be for emotional, it'll be to target physical, it'll be to target spiritual. Um, and you can use all three when you do long distance Reiki, there's certain symbols that we use for long distance Reiki in order to channel through to the animal's energy. So really, that's the difference between the master Reiki's and getting certified. It's being attuned and having those symbols that we use during our sessions. Attuned. I think I know what it means. I've heard it a ton of times before. What does it mean? So attunement is basically, how can I say, it kind of opens your energy channels to that level. So when you're doing Reiki one, you get attuned for Reiki one, and it opens your channels for those energies to be able to heal or to be able to send Reiki. And then when you do Reiki two, and you get certified for Reiki two, the symbols used to attune you for that is to open those channels and kind of like open you to that light, to that level of light in order to help um, send Reiki, use Reiki, do Reiki, do Reiki on yourself, do Reiki on others. And then the last level uh, three is to actually teach Reiki um, and certify people. So it all just depends on where you want to be. If you just want to give Reiki to yourself, if you want to give Reiki to others, if you want to teach Reiki, if you want to be an instructor on Reiki, and those are really what the levels, the levels signify. And each one of those levels gives you a different symbol that you can add. And it kind of just raises your vibration that's what it does because your life does change and it's weird when people say it and even when i wasn't getting certified i was like well i mean how much can it change like what what's really what's gonna happen and you'll notice that when you get attuned your vibration level changes it's so much higher your whole world changes it really does and you're just like oh my god i can't believe this is happening and it's because you, your whole vibration is just completely different. It changes your whole world. So you, as somebody who advanced in it and got certified, it changed your world is what you're saying. Completely, completely. Wow. And it might be things that you feel are negative at that moment and you'd be like, you know, or why did I total my car? Or why didn't I get this gig? Or why didn't I get that gig? And it really is because your vibration is so much higher now that better things than you were envisioning are in are waiting for you to happen. So like this whole howling ohm and just so many things have changed with everything that I wanted to do with the howling ohm that it says, mm. yeah, that's great that that's your goal. Well, we got something better in store for you. And when your vibration is raised that high, it kind of just clears out everything, just like the animals, just like the Reiki does when you do it on an animal or somebody it clears everything out and we're going to start fresh and it's going to be so much better. So I want to ask you, we like literally got a minute left here, but how do you raise your vibration? Cause I will tell you this, I will go somewhere. Like I'll go to the gym. It might be in like a meh food, you know, whatever. Just, and I walk in and don't, and I, this sounds like geeky, but I'll say it to myself, raise your vibration, raise it up. 
We're going to yes. raise your vibration yes. mentally. I'll say that to myself, but how do you do it? Absolutely. Just like that. You just say, I want to raise my vibration, my intent for this workout or my intent for this hour that I'm going to be here is to work on my legs or come out with a better mood or sweat or learn this new this new uh, Zumba routine or whatever it is that you're going in, even if it's in a meeting, even if it's for work, even if you're going in and you're like, oh, today I'm just not feeling it, but I really just want to raise my vibration. I really just want to get into a better mood and thinking it, envisioning it will allow you to feel it. And you'll see how things will change for you like that. Maybe you went into the gym and you're just like, oh my God, I just don't want to do this routine again. But you're, you talk to yourself, you say it out loud. It's kind of like an affirmation and your whole mindset will change. And you'll see maybe something in that routine will spark it up. And you're like, oh my God, it was a totally different, you know, it's the same exercises, but I felt totally different today. Mm. Yeah. And that's and raising your vibration. <laughs> I, I get it. And, and it applies to everything. Like you could. Yes. Yeah, you know, let's face it, you know, you scroll Instagram and you might see some people that you know that you're connected to. And the first thought is like, oh, look at them doing, you know, and and it's a negative <laughs> thought. Yes. And it, it's like right away, you're like, nope, 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 nope. Be yes. positive. Maybe you don't Thank agree you. with them, but it's like, I don't need to be negative. Just be positive on it. Right. Yes. All you have to say is like, well, you know, good for them. It's not something I would do, but they look right. so happy. <laughs> exactly. And even you just saying they look so happy, the word happy talking about sounds every word has resonates a different way in your body and saying the word happy resonates to everybody on a very high vibration it changes you then when you say oh that's so sad or that looks horrible that brings the vibration automatically low so using trigger words like that like oh it's not something i would do but they look so happy it completely changes everything not only the resonance of that word but when you say the word happy you smile, you smile. <laughs> it's, it's one of those words where exactly it ends in an e or you know that sound where where the smile comes out yeah um, fascinating stuff you do i mean it's um, i'm totally on board and and it makes such a difference with ourselves and our pets. If somebody, this is resonating with somebody, they reach out to you. I'm sure they have questions. Uh, it's a free consult. You start there so somebody can understand a little bit better what, what happens in the process. Yes, free consult. Um, you can tell me what, what it is you would like to work on or what the issues that you're, you're having with your pet or what comes to your concerns you have, medical, emotional, whatever it is. Um, so free consult. And if you book three sessions, you get one for free because Reiki cool. works better. Um, if you do it consistently, uh, again, it goes case by case. Um, so if you book three sessions, you get one for free. You can find me on Instagram, Howling Ohm. You can find me on Facebook, Howling Ohm. Website is www.howlingohm.com. So yes, free consultation. Feel free to text me, call me, email me at uh healing at healing it's yes the email is healing at howlingohm.com gotcha yeah it's all about healing and uh yeah. it's a brand new year so you know i look at it this way also we say the word happy and you smile 2023 you smile so yes. <laughs> make it a good one and and put out the positive energy for you uh, and your pets tatiana always yeah. great having you on with us Thank you, Steve. You too. All right. We'll talk soon and uh, we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just 
knocked down. I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.